On the night of November 16, 2011, nurse Roger Dean arrived for his regular shift at the Quakers Hill nursing home. But this was anything but an ordinary night. According to police, that night, Roger Dean made a number of trips to the room where medication was stored at the nursing home. In doing so, he stole 237 oxycodone tablets, pain-killing tablets with a morphine base. CCTV footage records Dean walking repeatedly to and from the medication room and back to his desk. The next night, we see Dean again. When he arrives at the nursing home for his next shift, he is confronted by management from the nursing home who have discovered the missing drugs. When police arrive at the nursing home, they ask Dean if he knows anything about the missing medication. Again, he tells them that he has no idea, and again, he appears extremely anxious. The police leave, and later that night, Dean tells two nurses on staff to take an early break and to take it at exactly the same time. This is a very unusual move. Staff at the nursing home are not supposed to take breaks at the same time and are only supposed to take them on schedule. Dean is then seen walking to and from a number of rooms at the nursing home. It is then, according to police, that he sets the fire that destroys the nursing home and takes 11 lives. He is seen walking to one room and then walking to another. Police say that he lights one bed, an empty bed in an empty room, and then walks to another room, setting an empty bed on fire while two elderly women are asleep. Dean later admits to police that he knew that the two women were there, but that he did nothing to warn them or inform them. He walks out of the room and he does not look back. It got out of control and I got really scared because I didn't think that it would spread so quickly. Footage then shows the fire taking hold. Smoke begins to disseminate throughout the nursing home, affecting the elderly residents, most of whom are asleep. Dean is then seen trying to assist a number of the nursing home residents to evacuate. Becoming increasingly anxious and panicked, Dean runs from room to room. He assists an elderly woman to the door, his hand covering his mouth in a bid to shield himself from the smoke. He is later treated for smoke inhalation. I fire and I just quickly just did what I can, get everyone out and the smoke is just overwhelming, but, you know, we got a lot of people out, so that's the main thing. There's still probably a few people, and the people are trying their best to get everyone out at the moment. Yeah. Footage then shows Dean incredibly having left the nursing home, returning and pleading with firefighters to let him back in. Police say that at this point, Dean is trying to convince the firefighters to let him in so that he can go and steal the drug registration books which contain evidence of his crime. Finally, he manages to convince the firefighters to let him back in. He takes the books, leaves the nursing home, he walks home, he shreds the books and then he takes them to a dumpster in the nearby Quakers Hill shopping village. Incredibly, he then returns to the nursing home again and assists further residents who are suffering from smoke inhalation. It doesn't take long for police to pinpoint Dean as the main target and suspect in their investigation. Having already begun to investigate him in relation to the stolen medication, he's an obvious choice for a suspect. They bring him into the police station and on the afternoon of November 18, 2011, he confesses to lighting the fire. It started just as a small flame and I thought that, that that's okay, like that's containable. I didn't expect it to be 
it's so big. It was just something stupid and something that I wish I'd never done. In a bizarre, disturbing and it's sometimes remorseful confession, Dean says that he was affected or corrupted by evil thoughts. He says that Satan himself put these thoughts into his head. I love the residents very much and I have a really good rapport with them. So I feel extremely bad and I just feel evil that I'm just corrupted with evil thoughts that had made me do that. He says that he was simply looking around for something to light. He says that this was a self-destructive act, an act that was as much about harming himself as about harming others. Indeed, he claims that he didn't think anyone would be hurt at all. Now, however, he has to live with the fact that 11 lives have been lost as a result of his actions. Eight further lives have been affected by injury and many more people's lives have been shattered.